So I actually looked up the price of how much this is going for right now. It is going for a lot of money. It's $850 retail on Card Kingdom, and they don't have any. So the buy list, when you don't have any of something on Card Kingdom, the buy list is actually a higher percentage than 50%. It can often be 60, 65%. But uh, we're going to talk about Boogie. So Boogie is in a documentary. Again, different time. Magic cards were more down. I think the reserve list has made a push back up. But he's selling two Gayer's Kratos for $400 cash. Because he needs to make rent. And the documentary really shows you. And, and even before. I mean he knows he needs to make cash. And he enters a tournament for $30. Right. So he's desperately. The, the whole idea of the documentary is. He's never had a job before. He's unemployable. It's that he needs cash. Boogie needs cash. And how is Boogie going to get cash? That's the idea behind the documentary. right? In a nutshell. And. One of the things that is really apparent is that he is relying on his collectible, collect which includes Magic the Gathering, as like this like financial, like as an investment vehicle, right? As a, a place where he can liquidate his Magic collection should he need money for rent, which is exactly what he's doing. And this is a very, very bad thing. I, I've spoken about it for many years, that when you're desperate, and you need to make rent, selling magic cards, you're not going to get anywhere near what you would be if you weren't desperate. And that's true for anything. That's pawn stores, right? They pay 10% of what something is worth, right? Because they know if you're going to my store to sell me something, I'm going to lowball you. I'm going to rip you off. And you came here knowing that, right? You came here. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. That's the same with any game store, right? If you go to a game store, a local game store, trying to sell them something, you, they know that you know that they know you are only here because you desperately need the money. And anything, you know, anything will, I don't want to take, I think they're taking advantage of you necessarily, but they are taking advantage of you um, in a, you know, again, we can argue the ethics, but I just want to, explain one very important point for you two guys to get is that no one's getting a hundred percent of comps no one when alpha investment shows you the graphs on tcd there's fees there's shipping there's chargebacks there's scammers right there are a lot of things involved in selling a single booster box including ratings uh, more likely than not you know let me be 100 of you more likely than not um when you're first trying to sell something and you've been told this is an investment and then, you know, the liquidity, you never asked about the liquidity and it's never talked about. No one talks about the liquidity, right? And you go set up an eBay account. Setting up the account takes time. They need your ID and so on. Uh, it, it makes you vulnerable, right? If you put in your credit card or your bank or whatever, your PayPal, whatever. Should eBay be hacked or PayPal be hacked? Um, and then... On, on the flip side, now you got to list it. You got to wait maybe a week if you want the auction to run a week, right? You got to pay attention to what's happening. There are shield builders, right? There's fake build bidders all the time for, and you have zero rating. So like many times people take a loss to build up their rating system so they can really sell. But you're just like an individual investor. You're buggy. You don't want to do this for a living. You're lazy. You, you don't want to do anything. You just want to, so the only option for you is to take it to your local game store. Um, you might be even so lazy. You don't like, here's something I will tell you. Like if you're going to take it to your local game store and not card kingdom or not me or whatever, right. Um, please just, just wait for a, a convention, you know, for a bigger city near it will be, if you have a size, if your collection is $10,000 or more, um, I would highly suggest at least card kingdom, at least somebody like me or, going to a larger convention where there are multiple vendors, therefore they have to compete, I would not suggest selling a $10,000 collection to any local game store because it's they're just going to fleece you. I mean, they know, they see you a mile away coming in and down. And that's what they did. So the, the current price of the Cradle today at Card Kingdom, and they don't even have a Cradle in stock near Mint, 
And I'm assuming buggies is near mint. It does make a big difference in prices, right? Of course. But we, and we never see the cards specifically shown for their conditions. Um, man, it is a bloodbath out there right now. People lowballing, people fleecing, people trading MetaZoo for your product. Um, yeah, you're going to get aft. You know, so just try to get aft less. Uh, at any point, any of these suggestions I have for you, outside of you selling it yourself, but that means you put in work, labor, and you're gonna, you're gonna be the lowest price point ever sold, man. You have zero reviews. The people who are taking buying from you, they're taking a chance, and many of them are probably scammers. I, I tell you, they they scam people with zero reviews all the time. I think uh, the Black Lotus thing, where the Nazi bought the Black Lotus, the guy didn't have good reviews. And that's why eBay just immediately you said, "Oh well, it's you know it's the buyer." He's saying that you sold him a black fake black. Oh, you got video, you got everything on YouTube, and nothing he can do. Probably if, if he was like a super seller, like Alpha Investment, I'm sure eBay would have cared far more. But they didn't, and he got away with it. He basically bought a black lotus, claimed that the one that was sent was fake, and then got a full refund and got to keep the real black lotus. That's the danger that you're facing on eBay as a seller. The danger is you sell them a sealed box. They open the box, don't like what they got, said that you sent them a unsealed box. Well, eBay is always going to go side with the buyer, and now you're out the box, um, and you're out the money. Congrats. Selling cards, man, ain't easy. I, I always sell cards in person because I... Once I heard eBay rolled on the Ferdy Nazi, I got that, that just blows my mind, right? That's a, that's a mother effing unlimited Black Lotus. We dong them out. You know, it's it's not worth. It's not worth it. Um, I know they have authentication and stuff, but it was too late for that dude. That dude got Nazi'd, man. And that was a Nazi doing it too, with like twenty like criminal convictions for uh, mail fraud. <laughs> Yeah, still, still able to sell on eBay somehow. Still able to buy because he's a buyer, right? Probably eBay would not want him to sell. He's a criminal record. But anyway, back to my point. But goes in, expects that his Kratos are at least worth 400 based on the market. Has two Kratos, has a City of Traders. I don't know if the City of Traders is there. And just gets wrecked. He gets $400 in cash, which he des desperately needs. Again, desperate people will take less money. It should be obvious, right? I mean, it's not something uh, crazy here that I'm talking about. No one understands how hard it is to sell. No one, until you go to sell. Especially these investor types, right? And then you get totally hard truth. Your cards are not wor worth anything near what alpha investment is showing on his tcg mid graphs <laughs> bye guys